I think on some level, Intel must know that their product naming scheme could be less confusing. Where that level is, well, your guess is as good as mine because they have certainly never admitted it to us. And yet, here we are with an Intel-sponsored deeper dive into the Core X series, their high-end desktop processors, where we'll cover the key options available and what they might be most useful for. Okay, so first, a little context. Intel's X299 platform is divided up into two major architectures, KB Lake X and Skylake X. KB Lake X is essentially their consumer 7000 series chips with more heavy duty traces, slightly higher clock speeds, and the higher power consumption that goes with it. As a result, it differs significantly from other CPUs that fit into the LGA2066 socket. Intel intends them as entry-level chips for folks who want to get into an HEDT or high-end desktop motherboard and then upgrade later. But so far, they've been most successful in competitive overclocking, especially in light of the six core options that are available on the Z370 consumer side of things now. Skylake X, on the other hand, is where the meat's at. Here, we've got two classes of processors, Core i7 and Core i9. All of them have unlocked multipliers for overclocking, Intel hyperthreading technology, quad-channel DDR4 memory, support for AVX2 and AVX512 x86 extensions, and they share Skylake X's new cache setup of one meg of level two cache per core matched with a shared level three cache that's much smaller than previous generations, but in practice proves more efficient in most scenarios. Where they differ is in the core count, which increments by two for each step up the product stack, the number of PCI Express lanes, which is lower on Core i7 models, and the implementation of Turbo Boost Max 3.0. So CPUs with eight cores or more get two Max Boost cores, while the 7800X gets zero Turbo Boost Max cores. Now we won't be doing a deep dive on every SKU. Just the top tier Core i9 7980XE to show what the platform is capable of in multi-threaded and virtualized workloads, the Core i9 7900X, the jack of all trades, and the Core i7 7820X, which we believe should be the entry level CPU for most buyers on this platform. Let's start with that last one. It has 28 PCI Express lanes, so that's enough for a full-speed graphics card, a couple of NVMe SSDs, and some high-speed networking. So it's about right for an entry-level workstation, which is great because that's where this chip's performance shines. It actually has the highest base frequency in the entire Skylake X lineup, it shares the highest boost frequency with the 7900X, and it also shares the highest two-core Turbo Boost Max 3.0 frequency at 4.5 gigahertz, making it a great fit for a workstation that isn't always used for work. Pew, pew. Moving into Core i9 territory, we leave behind the 28 PCIe lanes and step up to 44, where we get perhaps the most interesting CPU in the X299 lineup, the 10-core Core i9-7900X. When this guy launched, we reviewed it quite favorably thanks to its major performance improvements over its predecessor, the Core i7-6900K, and even the 6950X. Now to be clear, not everyone is gonna see a performance improvement versus the 7820X, but if you wanna have full, unbottlenecked access to many connected PCI Express devices, be they networking, storage, video capture, or expensive accelerator cards, this is where you want to be. And you get another two cores for workloads that can take advantage of them as well. The rest of the Core i9 lineup is what I would describe as tweeners. That is, they are in between the 7900X, two cores per step, and the highest end CPU Intel has ever released on a desktop platform, the $2,000 18-core Core i9-7980XE. This thing is an absolute beast, and it shows in both its performance numbers and its power draw. 
It blitzed through our testing suite, pulling off similar per thread performance numbers to its fewer core brethren, and even beating out our 22 core Xeon E5 2699 V4. And <laughs> it managed to pull 500 to 600 watts on its own when overclocked. It doesn't win any bang for the buck gaming awards, but for those that need this kind of performance, be they video editors, uh, 3D animators using fluid simulation, or anyone who's doing high-end computational work that can't be offloaded onto a GPU, well, it could be that for you, raw performance is all that matters because time is money and a CPU that outputs faster can pay for itself pretty quickly. Skylake X represents a healthy improvement upon the previous generation and it's a solid choice when it comes to both per-thread and multi-threaded performance. Now we just hope that Intel's plan for a more dynamic and risky future brings us even more performance next year and the year after that, because we're insatiable like that. So thanks for watching guys. If you just like this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Also down there, we've got our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should totally join.